Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Houston Oilers versus the Cincinnati Bengals. These teams are more than rivals. They are avowed enemies. Sam White, the coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, says we not only want to beat Houston, we want to soften them up because we need Cleveland to beat them next Saturday night, too. Well, that's one of the tough problems. When you talk about distractions, I think distraction for the Cincinnati Bengals is the fact that they not only have to win, they got to soften up the Oilers, and they got to hope that everybody else beats everybody else. I think that can become a distraction. They just need to try to win this game. Forget about beating up the Oilers. Nobody has done that in the last three years. Alonzo Highsmith is his bodyguard. Great blocker, good runner. Extra receivers come in. They go to the red gun. Four receivers set often. Warren Moon does not play with gloves on. After all his cold weather experience, says you're better off without them. Or are you? He fumbles on the first play, and the Bengals seem to have the ball. David Fulcher, the all-pro safety, comes up for the first snap of the day to Warren Moon, a proven cold weather quarterback. He praised him, and Jerry Glanville's Oilers lose the ball to the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals, as you know, go from scrimmage without huddles quite often, and the Oilers don't call many defensive huddles. In fact, Glanville says they haven't called one in six games. Here is Esiason, play fake into the end zone. Eddie Brown has it, and it's a touchdown for the Bengals. They're in the bitter cold. The Bengals strike quickly. A fumble by the Oilers on their first play from scrimmage. Three plays later is turned into a 22-yard touchdown. Isaiah to Eddie Brown. Now it is third down and 16 for the Oilers, who trail 7-0. Set at the 20. Crumrise as the first man to get him. Tim Crumrise coming back from that leg fracture he suffered in the Super Bowl. Crusher Sean Jones at right end. Lyles is back. He's missed three games. And here is Isaiah Big rush against him. He lets it go. And it's wide open for an interception. And Dishman drops the ball. Now they start up. They have a fight going after the play. It's just quickly broken up. <laughs> Actually, two flags down in the field of mod. Well, you know, one of the, one of the smart things to do, don't get in a fight on the other team's sideline. You can't get much help over there. The legal formation, the offense is not set. We have four men on the defense. We have a personal foul rushing the quarterback defense. And we have a personal foul, number 78, late hit, Cincinnati. Oh, now, that's the most penalties I've ever heard of on one play. Jerry doesn't quite understand that either. Now, this is the late hit right here. Boomer lets his ball go and then gets leveled. Here's Dishman has a chance. He shows why he's a defensive back and not a receiver by knocking <laughs> the ball down. Siason floats it downfield and is caught by Tim McGee, and he's inside the 15-yard line. A 15-yard gain on a third and seven play. First down, Bengal. Tim McGee up to a good start. And two catches, 33 yards. Now on first down, James Brooks tries to turn the corner and does, and James Brooks is hidden in. Touchdown, Cincinnati. 14 yards and a TD, and the Bengals have jumped out in front big. They're up 13-0 with 10-12 still to be played in the first quarter. It's so unlikely that Jerry did leave him the tickets. He usually leaves him for Elvis or the Phantom of the Opera or Elliot Ness. Well, unless that guy underneath that mask is Elvis, I doubt Elvis. that Jerry did leave that. Yeah, that Indianapolis is now on the board, trailing the Dolphins by three as we go to live action. Long ball, end zone, Eddie Brown, touchdown, Bengals. And that was on six yards. Quick, elusive Cincinnati wide receivers are eating up the Houston secondary. Early in this game, we have a TKO in Browning. 4.45 to play in the first quarter, and the Bengals have taken a 20 to nothing with Ready to pick the point after. So Jim Breach, the father of six, he had two little kickers at the practice yesterday with him. It's the point after, after Eddie Brown makes his second touchdown reception of the day. 
And the Bengals have blown this game open in the first quarter, 21 to nothing. Here's a very, watch the concentration on this play. Bubba McDowell tries to swing his hand in there, and Eddie Brown, watching the ball the entire time, makes a nice catch. But Boomer Esiason was watching the Oilers defense, and they were just slowly trying to get in and off the field. He lined his team up right away, took the snap, and took it to distance. Just fired it down the field. And that's what that's what Glanville's arguing about right now. He feels like his team didn't have a chance to match up. He's really upset about it. Because Robert Lyles, I was watching the entire time, was trying to call timeout. There's another look. Boomer Sison faking over there and then going deep with the play. Great catch by Eddie Brown. The you know, Oilers have been a wild card team the past two years. They've not won a divisional championship outright since the American Football League in 1967. David Kocher intercepts Warren Moon. And Kocher's not done yet. The all-pro strong safety who recovered the opening fumble now comes up with a second turnover. The Oilers drive a stop. David Kocher with his sixth interception of this season. In this offense, the receiver and the quarterback have to read the same thing when looking at a defense. Ernest Gibbons, number 81, saw the open. Look out now for the rollout play action pass on third down and nine. Dyson very effective with this, rolling out. And the play action, first faking. There's the fake, there's the rollout. As the Siasen throws downfield, and it's caught inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. Eddie Brown with a 17-yard reception, and Glanville and his Oilers are in deep trouble on this cold day. Second and nine, Boomer takes a look. A pattern, Stanford Jennings inside the 10, spinning down to the six-yard line. It was a second and nine play, and he got about eight. It'll be third and short now for Cincinnati. Very nice move by Stanford Jennings trying to spin inside and pick up that first down. And he did pick it up. Running out of Furman. Stanford Jennings. Now the play fake is the ball. The end of the end zone. It's yet another Cincinnati touchdown. Sam White's passing game has worked into perfection as the tight end Rodney Holman comes down with the ball. Eighth touchdown catch of the year. He leads all NFL tight ends and TD receptions. And the Houston Oilers had to be thinking about the one to the dome and playing Cleveland next Saturday night because they sure aren't in this one. That's a very tough position to be in. Glanville knows it, that you don't want to go into a game thinking, well, if we lose this one, we'll win the next one. But here is this year's best tight end, Rodney Holman, making a great catch right there for the touchdown. This Houston Oilers team, boy, it, it just starts to fade away on you when you say, oh, if we don't win this one, we'll win the next one. And the extra point by Jim Breach is up and good, and the Oilers now find themselves down 28 to nothing. Gary Glanville says the Oilers play better when opposing fans boo them. Nobody's booing now. Perhaps he wishes they would. It was, it was Glanville told us yesterday, Ahmad, that... The team that has possession last is probably going to win. It turned out the team that had possession first is probably going to lose because his team fumbled and the Bengals took it right in. But they, he's had a great year. Yeah, they just have not been able to get anything going. 